Hello, I'm High Heel Knight. This is my Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 reaction. Three, two, one. So, you have the next Harry Potter movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And let me tell you, stuff's getting real bad in the wizarding world. Oh, are we not gonna make these movies good anymore? No, that's <laughs> gonna come a couple years from now. What I mean is that Voldemort and the Death Eaters are coming into power. Uh-oh. Yeah, so Harry sends the Dursleys away for their protection, and Hermione wipes her parents' memories away. Jeez, she couldn't have done the protection thing too? Nope, and so they forget <laughs> all about her, and she's erased from all the pictures in the house, and it's very sad. So they're just gonna think they have framed pictures of empty rooms and stuff? I guess so, yeah. What happens when they talk to anybody who knew they had a daughter, like friends or family? I don't- I don't know. Oh, Hermione's parents are in for some very confusing conversations. Probably, yes. Yeah. So now the good guys need to help Harry escape by confusing the Death Eaters. How do they do that? Well, like, half of them are gonna take Polyjuice Potion to look like him, so it's gonna be this wacky scene with a bunch of Harry Potters changing into similar clothes. Oh, hanging out with a bunch of shirtless copies of yourself is tight. It sure is, sir. So they fly up to the clouds, but a bunch of Death Eaters are waiting for them, so it's gonna be this massive battle. Why didn't all the good guys fly into different directions? Unclear, but then Hedwig saves Harry's life and dies. Oh no, bird friend! And also Mad-Eye Moody dies. Oh no, one-eyed friend who is actually a completely different person for most of the time we ever saw him on screen. And because Hedwig tried to protect Harry, that gives away his real identity, so freaking Voldemort shows up and attacks them. Ah, uh, those freaking guys, they had some good bird loyalty intel, huh? They sure <laughs> did, sir, so Voldemort attacks, but a wand technicality and Harry's insane plot armor save his life. He does have some pretty fantastic plot armor, doesn't he? He truly does. So all the surviving wizards meet at the Weasley's house to be safe from the Death Eaters. The house that was destroyed by Death Eaters in the last movie? Yeah, they rebuilt it, so everything's okay now. But they would still know where it was, right? That's the safest place they could think of. That's what we're going with. So then it's time for a wedding. They're gonna have a wedding while they're all being chased by Death Eaters? Yeah, well, that's kind of the thing. They're like, maybe especially now it's important that we celebrate love and stuff. I guess that is a nice sentiment if it's like a little ceremony kind of under the radar. So then they have a massive wedding with a bunch of people and a bunch of Death Eaters attack it. Well, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Come on, wizards. So Harry and Ron and Hermione escape and they decide they need to go find these horcruxes. Oh boy, what kind of stuff are they gonna do? Oh, they're gonna break into the Ministry of Magic, which is now run by the bad guys, because Umbridge works there, and she has a Horcrux locket around her neck. Jeez, how are they gonna break in? They're gonna use Polyjuice Potion to pretend like they're three people that work there. Wow, you'd think the Ministry of Magic would have some kind of safeguard against that kind of thing. Well, they don't. It, it seems like people would do that kind of thing all the time. Like, how can they be sure about anyone's identity ever? Hey, shut up. So they <laughs> manage to get the locket, and they keep going with their adventure. Oh boy, so what's next? Camping! What? So much camping, sir. They're gonna camp and camp and camp some more. Oh. All right. Campity. Camp, camp, camp. Oh boy, are they gonna camp, sir. Okay, I got it. Okay, that's good. We're, I got it with the camping. Can we move on from the camping? Not really. No, it's gonna be a while. Okay, does anything exciting happen while they're camping? A little bit, yeah. Like, they take turns wearing the locket because it's evil and it does that thing to them. You know, like the ring in Lord of the Rings? It makes them get attacked by Sean Bean. No, like it drives them a little insane and puts them in bad moods. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, and Ron's gonna end up getting jealous of Harry and Hermione and he's gonna straight up leave. He's gonna stop camping with them. He's done with the camping, sir. Well, that's pretty serious, I guess. They seemed really into camping. So eventually, Harry's gonna find out that the Sword of Gryffindor is at the bottom of this frozen lake, and he needs it because it can destroy Horcruxes. Oh, that'll be useful, probably. Yeah, so he gets into this icy cold water to go get it, but that evil necklace starts choking him. Oh, been there. You got <laughs> choked underwater by a necklace? Yes. Okay, cool. And so anyway, then Ron shows up and saves him. Oh, how did he find him? Well, it turns out that Dumbledore had left Ron this little thingy that lets you turn off lights, but that also lets you find your friends when you need to find your friends. Wow, magic sure is convenient. Those are wildly different features for a thingy to have. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome, sir. So then Ron is gonna stab this locket thing, but then it pops open and starts playing mind games with him. Oh, like what? Like it's gonna try to scare him with some spiders. Mm, those are spooky. And then it shows him a fake vision of Harry and Hermione making out. That just seems like it would make him angrier in 
want to stab the locket. Yeah, that pisses him off, so then he stabs it. Yeah, really bad strategic planning there, <laughs> locket. What are you doing? Anyway, so then later some Death Eaters are gonna chase them through the woods. So they disapparate. No, see, they don't disapparate when I want there to be a cool chase or fight scene, and so this is one of those moments. Oh, okay, gotcha. So then they're about to get caught, and so Hermione decides to deform Harry's face, but the bad guys still see that he has a scar, so they're like, hmm. Right. So they bring them all to Malfoy Manor, and all the bad guys are like, wow, I wonder if this guy with the Harry Potter scar that we caught with Harry Potter's best friends is Harry Potter or not. That's a tricky one, for sure. So then they put them all in a cell, and Bellatrix starts torturing Hermione. Oh man, it's gonna be hard for them to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, Harry <laughs> talks into this magical mirror shard that he has, and so that leads to Dobby, the house elf, coming to save them. Well, where did Harry get the mirror shard? Well, in the books, he got that. He got that at a certain point. But how did he get it in the movies? Oh, I don't know, but he's gonna have it. Oh, okay. So then Dobby <laughs> saves them all, but Bellatrix manages to kill Dobby. Oh no, little house elf friend. And then Voldemort's gonna manage to get this thing called the Elder Wand from Dumbledore's tomb, and now he's super powerful, and he makes some very cool lightning. Oh boy, here we go. It's about to get crazy. Yeah. Well, go on. No. But <laughs> we're done. Oh, that's extremely unsatisfying. Yeah, well, you know, we gotta cut this thing off somewhere if we're gonna do this new thing where we cut it off into two parts. Oh, that's right, we are doing that thing, aren't we? Wow, I wonder if that's gonna catch on. <sighs> That's my reaction. Like, button, subscribe, share. You know what to do. I'm High Heel Knight. Find inspiration everywhere.